What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Marndale, and this week's guest I'm so excited to have back. She is our resident fish tin queen. <laughs> okay. She runs the Instagram account, The Real Sean Penn. She is a writer. She's a comedian. Caroline Goldfarb is here again. Thank uh, you for having me, Justin. Yes, I'm so glad. The, the listeners have listened, and they have spoken. They were, it took them like a year-ish, but they- Which is crazy. The ball started rolling. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I was like, how was that like so long ago? I don't know. I don't know. What have you been up to? More fish on? tinning. Yes. You know, I, I've got the apparatus in the garage, and I'm firing that bad boy up. Mm -hmm. Dust till dawn. The fish. <laughs> dawn till dust. <laughs> just fish The fish tinning. don't tin themselves. The fish do not tin themselves. I'm sorry, but they just don't. How is that not a shirt? The fish don't, you know what? I, I better go into work on that. Yeah, you, the fish don't That's going to help the bottom line. Mm -hmm. What have I been up to? Well, okay, m the new season of the show I write for, The Sex Size of College Girls, is coming out in exactly a month. Perfect. Whatever today's date is, I know uh -huh. it's a month from today. It's 21st. Yeah. So whenever this airs, November 21st. And I'm also writing, I don't think I can say because I signed an NDA on a very big animated franchise IP. Ooh. Let's just say... It, let's just say it's the Croods 3. No, I'm just kidding. I can't actually say what it is. <laughs> I was like, not the Croods 3. I don't want to say, but it is a spinoff about Mama Crude. No, I'm writing on a really exciting movie. I don't think I can say what it is yet. Okay. But I like to tease and I want to get people like wet their whistle a little bit. Yeah, they're like, what does she mean? Mama Crude? Is it <laughs> I her? know. Can we finally get the backstory we've been dreaming of? Fine, it's Over the Hedge 2. No, it's <laughs> when you find out You'll be gagged. You'll be gooped. Okay. But you'll find out soon enough. And you can tell me after the show. Okay. Okay, all right. Done. Well, that's awesome. I'm yeah. so glad you're back. Yeah. Um, are we in Halloween yet? Are we? How are we feeling? In are we in Halloween? Am I in the spirit? In the mm -hmm. spirit Halloween? You know, Halloween. I'm kind of over Halloween already. I know this is a hot take. Yeah. But I just feel it's been so exhausted, spooky season. If I have to hear the phrase spooky season one more time, I'm going to fucking murder someone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm finding a little, I'm finding myself just a little exhausted by the aesthetic, by the push, the societal need for us all to dress up and be excited about this thing. I'm holding on to Christmas, Mariah style. Oh, That's yeah. when I come alive, you yeah. know? November but 1st. I'm just trying to get through, survive till 25, survive it's, till Christmas. Here's the thing. It's fun. I love, I love Halloween. I have been watching mm. horror films every night mm. with my fiance because he's not a big like horror film buff. So I'm like, we're watching The Conjuring. Mm. Uh, last night, I introduced him to the 2004 hit The Crucible with Winona, Winona Ryder and uh, Daniel... Uh, What's his name? Daniel. Day Lewis. I love Daniel how you Day immediately Lewis. pull Winona Ryder's name, but Daniel Day Lewis. Academy one of Award our... winner Daniel Day yeah. Lewis. I'm like, ugh, we got like, your left foot. again. <laughs> yeah, but no, but like, it's not a horror film, but it's an Arthur Miller classic about mm -hmm. the Salem witch trials. Fell asleep on the couch. I'm it's... like, I keep hitting his feet. I'm like, wake up, wake, wake up. up! It's the Crucible, He's babe. Like, this is boring. He's like, it's not even scary. And I go, babe. It is scary. You want to know why? Hmm. Because it really happened, and it could happen again. Yeah, it's kind of weird watching The Crucible and being like, it, we're kind of kind of here again. If Trump wins, we're all going to be killed for being witches. Oh, God, I wish. Finally, that day will come. Um, but no, here's the thing. I was telling Lee before, we, before you got here, I was like, I am at that point in my life now where I'm comfortably uninviting myself to Halloween parties. I Too know. Soon. Too soon. I know. Halloween's on a Thursday this year. Oh. We have to deal with, you know, Santa Monica Boulevard closing and all mm. that bullshit. But mm -hmm. now I'm like, you know what? This is the weekend where I'll do something. I'm in my 30s. Yeah. Halloween parties, okay, maybe when I was in college in my 20s. I am almost a 35-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. I don't need to Same. dress up as fucking Ray Gun or whatever and yeah. get blackout drunk on a Thursday night. I know. I'm done. And also, guys, if you're listening, mm. step up your costumes. What do you mean by that? Just like everyone who's like been out and stuff, like over the weekend, I'm like looking at my friends' costumes, not my friends, but like people who are at parties and stuff. And I'm like, oh. What? Really? Just it's just like a craft project gone wrong. Mm, like you know? A hot glue gun massacre. Hot glue gun, tin foil, mm. just naked. That's good. Why are you mad about that? I'm not mad at it, but it's also like you're just naked. 
Like, okay, I, you and I don't see eye to eye on this. <laughs> I want more nudity, more nakedness, From, less costume. Yeah. I'm like, men, tone down your costume. You want less, more naked guys? More skin, yeah. less costume, less thinking. Yeah. Put on a pair of basketball shorts and be shirtless and just say you're on the fucking 49ers or yeah. something. I don't even give a shit. Let me see your body. I do not care. I love seeing a body, don't get me wrong, but then it's like the reach... The reach of a costume is mm. just, it can be a little much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You want it to be easy. You don't want it to be a thinker. I, I'd like to think, but I also like to get it. I, see I don't what want to saying. be in you the corner all like? night being like, what is it? You know what I don't like? Puns. I, I love a pun. You love a pun? Oh my yeah. God. Okay. I love a pun. So, like, I went to Selena Gomez for Halloween one year, and I was Selena the. The Slain Tejano singer with Gomez Adams' face. That's really smart. Selena Gomez. Yeah. It's really smart. But uh, that would take me... It I, took some people a while. Months. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be thinking about that for possibly years. <laughs> yeah. Confused. Well, I'm out this year. I'm not doing Halloween. Yeah. I'm just going to hand out candy to trick-or-treaters, and that's, that's all I have the energy for. I'm excited. I feel like this weekend, it's after the full harvest moon that we had. I feel like uh, you didn't. Neil Young talking about the Harvest Moon. Did you not feel the Harvest Moon? I saw a big moon, but I didn't. It, know was, it was huge. You know what? I'm also the last sick of silver moon of the year. Oh, this is <laughs> it. Why is every moon a special moon? They're becoming less special because every full moon is like blood moon, wet moon, witch moon, that moon, Harvest mm -hmm. Moon. I'm like. Let's save it for the really special ones mm -hmm. because they're all becoming less special. Do That's you know how what I'm I mean? feeling about our Pop Princesses remixes. Oh, you think we that... We get it. We get it. We get it. You think like Brat has, for example... Well, when the album is called This Is Still Brat, but not really. There's a couple new songs, but it's still Brat. Like, yes. That's <laughs> Wait, I... But isn't the whole thing that the remixes are this sort of shameless ploy to get onto the Billboard Hot 100. Absolutely. You have to, if you're it's, not pulling all top 10 spots, are you even an artist anymore? I ask myself this question every day over yeah. the tin fish machine. Yeah. I'm slaving away on uh -huh. that thing. And I'm like, if you don't, this is how it If works. you don't like have this. the top five songs in the country, what are you doing? I know. And you know, you know who does? First? Jelly Roll. Who is Jelly Roll? I'm so Who is glad. Jelly Roll? He is the most famous singer yeah. in the world, yeah. and I've never heard of him. Gun to your head, can you name a Jelly Roll song? Uh, no. I'm sorry to Dead. bring guns into this. I, I, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. I it's believe in current. gun control except for this one right. instance. A Jelly Roll in the head. Gun to your head. I don't, I agree. I, I, I got a notification today saying Jelly Roll is quitting X, and I was like... No. No? But no. But why? But, 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 but what? But, but why, Papa? <laughs> why? Come on, no. <laughs> it's been such a year already. Why, Jelly Roll? <laughs> no. Why? Please, not this close to the election, Papa. <laughs> I don't know why I'm British, but it, it when Jelly Roll quits X, yeah. like it makes you, you don't know what's happening. I was like, ring the alarms. Like, Jelly Roll is quitting X. So... Whoever R. he P. is and whatever that is, it's a loss for all of us. Yeah, them. yeah. I feel like if you do say Jelly Roll three times, which we just have, he will show Winona up. Ryder in the Crucible appears. <laughs> God, I wish. I wish. She's giving me Abigail Williams realness. I've got to see it. I saw Goody Good with the Devil. Yes, Mama. I, yeah. <laughs> I am so not familiar enough with The Crucible to play this game. You better watch it. It's good. I better watch. It's a good one. Um, well, let's get into some stories, shall we? Okay. Over the weekend, we had the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, oh. which is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Wait, what? Yeah. I can't even follow the corporate logic of that. Yeah. It's in Cleveland. Yes. I know that. Mm -hmm. And then Disney Plus, and I've lost Disney it. Plus, like, picked it right up and is like, stream it, let's go. I actually want to watch it because I'm very excited about this year's inductees. Some of the inductees were Mary J. Blige, Cher, Dave Matthews Band, Foreigner, Peter Frampton, Cool and the Gang, Ozzy Osbourne, and A Tribe Called Quest. And they, like, went all out. Basically, you just sounded like Peanuts adults, except for the word share. Oh. When shares in a sentence, mm -hmm. the rest of the sentence fades away. Everyone just, like, goes to the back. I could give two shits about Peter Frampton. I want share. Yeah. And that's all I ever want to talk about. I, um, just, that's all I saw. And here's the thing about share. She told the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I want to say maybe last year, two years ago, to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. She's like, fuck the, fuck the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Whoa. 
and then gets inducted into it. She's like, okay, that's, fuck back on. That's share. And yeah. Evan and I drove to Malibu yesterday. We went to Escondido Falls. We drove by Cher's house, honked, and said congrats. Mm. <laughs> by I'm Cher's sure Malibu home. She was in. She was there. She was in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. She was like in the bed in her bathroom. Because yeah. in my head, there's a bed in her bathroom, and she absolutely. Was like, Thank you. Yeah. No, we yeah. drove by. We're like, congrats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but like, Dua Lipa came out and sang with her. Uh, Zendaya was wearing like a, a like a vintage say, Bob Mackie. When you say Dua Lipa came out and sang with her. You better watch yourself. You better watch yourself, Tin Fish Girl. You are, better watch yourself. So help me God. You better not, watch yourself because not. if you're gonna sit at this <laughs> at this sensible oak table mm-hmm. and tell me that this that is was a singing, vintage table, by the way. I'm so sorry. This vintage letter writing table. Mm-mm. If you're going to tell me that Calligraphy that, was written on this table. No, I can tell. Okay. If you're going to tell me that that was singing, if you were going to sit here oh. and defend Dua Lipa's vocals, oh. I would love to hear it, oh. and I would love to respond to every point. God Dua Lipa's damn. not a vocalist. Well, I mean, is anyone anymore? Yes! Who? Adele. Cher wiped the floor with Dua Lipa's ass. That's all I'm going to say. But that's why. They're not going to have, like, Miley's Adele a vocalist. come out Should have with... been Miley. Miley's more of a vocalist. I know, but Miley and Cher were just... That's like, that sounds like a, a Mormon drink. Miley and Miley and Cher? Yeah, it sounds like... I'm drinking it. Coconut cream and Mountain Dew. Pop some in, I'll drink it, okay. girl. I'll put it in my Stanley. But not Dua. Dua, I love Dua Lipa. Look... I love Dua Lipa, too. She's a model who can sort of carry a tune. She's my Albanian my favorite. queen. I know. So <laughs> she's gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but she was flat the whole time. Yeah, she was a little flat. I watched the video, I'm not going to lie, and I can I can admit when a singer is off and it's like— Ooh. Again, you are still calling her a singer, and I am having an issue with that. Can we call her just sort of like— Albanian princess model? Yeah, just okay. sort of a— vaguely musical pop star. Okay. I know. I Look, I love her. She's gorgeous. I know. But man, Cher wiped the floor with her ass. Cher's 80-something years old. Yeah. Is she? Maybe she's like in her 70s. I think she's... Ageless, doesn't matter. Something like that. But it's... She is... Uh, she did sing Believe, which... Oh, that's the one song I'm like... I know. I hate Believe. You hate Believe? I do. You've got some very interesting takes. Yeah. That's why I have this podcast. I know. And, and she's there 78. You go. Wow. She's 78 years old, but Believe is just one of those songs that if I hear it, I'm like, ugh. And it's not that it's a bad song, not that Dua Lipa is a bad singer, mm. princess, but it's just that song that's. Do you believe in love and love and love? Did that like, happened to you while listening to Believe one time? I yeah, I, had, I was uh, dating girls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. Trauma. Major trauma. Yeah. If you see a vagina, while hearing the song Believe. I'd make me hate the song Believe, too. Yeah. Vaginas are scary. It's terrifying. I'm so sorry that happened it's like, to you. It's like that sand trap that Boba Fett fell in in I Star know. Wars. It's very Dune down there. Yeah. The scary parts of Just Dune. Teeth and tongue. Ugh. And worse. You don't want to know what's down in Dune. Um, but we also... Oh, look, Jelly Roll did perform um, with... Oh, of course, Jelly Roll's yeah, there. Yeah, with Ozzy Osbourne. So he was inducted. That's, Dave Matthews... Man, were you a big Dave Matthews band fan? You know, I'm were, not DMB Hive. Yeah. Yeah. Hive. <laughs> I'm not DMB Hive, no. Mm-hmm. But I did see a very big star showed up for DMB to introduce them. Did you see that? I missed that. Who? Julia Roberts. Oh, yes. She was wearing the Dave Matthews Band shirt. She did multiple grid posts Mm -hmm. about DMB. Mm -hmm. Julia Roberts doesn't throw down for anything the way that she throws down for Dave Matthews Band. But that tracks, right? I suppose. I get it. I could imagine Julia Roberts just like Like, jamming out to Dave Matthews Band. Like ants marching. She's like, doot. (laughs) Yeah. That's good. I don't know exactly what. I've been to see Dave Matthews Band maybe three or four times while I was in school in Texas because that's like, it's a rite of passage. Totally. And it was really fun. It was sure. really, really fun just smelling the the weed and the and the and just mm. the hot summer sun. The and hot, wet fentanyl yeah. wafting up into the sky. Listening to Satellite. 1995. Uh, yeah. Satellite. Mm. Mm, no, no. Yeah. Here's my take on Dave Matthews' band. Go for it. Dave Matthews' 
is fucking hot. Really? I think he is so You have a lot of interesting takes. Wow, the two of us, oil and water. I think he's cute. Look, obviously, you know, not maybe today, as hot as he was in the 90s. Okay. But he's a smoke show. He's got a vibe to him. He's playing that, plucking that guitar, doing mm-hmm. this thing. I get, I don't know one Dave Matthews Band song. But really? I know Ants Marching. Okay. Look at him. What would you say? Oh, yeah. He's got, like, average white man. He's giving Vince Vaughn. Well, he's like Louisiana, like, Bayou. Is he? Soul, Did yeah. He's giving me, like, a couple generations back, maybe a little... Middle Eastern. I'm getting like Lebanese. <laughs> a couple, I'm not saying his mom. Yeah. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? You're Paul like 23 and, and meing him. I'm I'm doing it with my eyes. Yeah. Look at him and his- Look at him in those shorts. And, and his cut off Jenkos. Yeah. And his Margaritaville top. Wood bang. Wood bang. Now, today, any day. So you're telling Dave Matthews that you would let him crash into you? I would let him crash all up into my tooth-laden vagina. <laughs> what was the line that he had in that one song? He was like, um, "You tell me." Uh, Hack up your little skirt a little more and show your world to me. Say less. In a boy's dream. Done. Yeah. Done, Dave. Yeah, I kind of. I'm. You're I feeling love the Dave it. Matthews Band song. Yeah. You know he's got a thick seven inches down there at least. Wow. You don't wear puka shells unless you have a big dick. Yeah. And that's a fucking fact. Ants marching is a metaphor for the seven inches that mm. are uh, aligned. That's how big Dave Matthews Band dong is. <laughs> it's big. Ants marching in seven inches. Yeah. Crash it all. Yeah, I think he's, 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 I, I definitely think he's sexy smoke show. So look, I mean, I would have loved him in the audience. Yeah. Uh, who else was there? Jennifer Hudson performed with uh, Dionne Warwick. Like it was like star studded. It was. How did she have the time? Jennifer Hudson or Dionne Warwick? <laughs> <laughs> well, both of them really. Oh, there's yeah. our girl Julia yep. Roberts in her shirt. Yeah. I. How does Jennifer Hudson have the time? The she woman is hosts. So busy. I know. Yeah. Doesn't she have kids? Yeah. She, it's like, she's always going somewhere, performing, doing something. It's, mm-hmm. it's really quite remarkable. I really admire her. And I mean, Mary J, oh. uh, classic Mary J look. Oh my. Yeah, there was Can like- we go back to that? Briefly? Yeah. This, I don't want to be disrespectful. Mm-hmm. I really don't, but she's, looks like a bunch of Christmas tinsel had a baby with a DVD copy of The Matrix. It's very pleather, yeah. very shredded. Very shredded um, I metal. think women should be able to wear whatever they want except for this one outfit. Mm. I think that this actually should be the exception. Yeah. I love You, you definitely J-Bot. could not wear this outfit to the dancery. You uh, know what I mean? Ain't no hollerating, ain't no, no hating, except, again, for this one outfit. But here's what I'm saying. I feel like all of the artists have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Are we in our lifetimes mm. going to see artists inducted such as the Black Eyed Peas or I would like to Let's see. I'm I'm pretty sure we'll see like no doubt at one point. No doubt will definitely, but yeah. you know the rules, right? It's 20 years you have after to be in 20 your years. first single. Yeah. Released, I mean, but right? 20 years it's like Beyoncé's solo album is 20 years. Well, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is so interesting because what is rock and roll anymore? Let's start there. Fair. And I, they've sort of strayed a little bit from the rock and roll, you know, like we're only going to be inducting rock and roll people and now they kind of bring in pop stars, but they still kind of have a stick up their ass apparently and mm-hmm. they like don't really nominate pop acts that often. Like they're kind of a weird organization. And also, what's the governing body of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Who the fuck said that they have the Hall of Fame mm-hmm. of all musical acts? I'm like, who are these people? It's a fucking museum in Cleveland. Get over yourselves. <laughs> Have you been to Cleveland? I'm not going the, to them for my cultural know-how. You don't want to walk in and be like, mmm, this speaks to me. You know what? I want Cleveland to tell me, like, who the best artists of all time were. Hell no. Yeah. They have ketchup in their chili or chocolate in their chili. They're weirdos. Yeah, yeah I don't like it. They put chili on spaghetti. Don't tell me who the best musical artists of all time are. You heard it first. I'm sorry. I didn't No, mean, it's fine. I didn't mean to get so heated. But also, I think it's like, I'm interested to see what they think classifies like will Backstreet Boys and NSYNC be nominated no, absolutely not you don't think so no I think that it is a bit of a dick swinging and prestige thing and I think that 
pop, like really poppy artists that don't have that critical acclaim or don't have those Grammys aren't going to be nominated. Like Coldplay. Coldplay will totally be in If they're not in it already, I don't know if they are. I don't them. think they are. But the other— Imagine th- Dragons. And you know how the nominating process works? So every year they announce the nominees and the voting body, which again are really random. It's mm-hmm. not just people in the music industry— nominate who we who you finally see that's like actually inducted but the list is always really interesting and long like i feel like Cindy Lauper like you always just see weird names on it and like the people that do get in and don't get in it's like all kind of weird well i'm still holding firm that Sade gets it next year. Sade was up for it. And the fact that Sade's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame blows my mind. The disrespect I, that disrespect. this world puts on Sade's name. Sure, she I hasn't know. released a song in like eight, seven years. She just released, she's releasing one of her, uh, about her trans child. Oh, Sade. Which I'm like, oh, love. Uh, oh, I know. She's on the right side of history. Of she course. is. Because why? She Sade. Because she Sade. Yeah. I love her. Is there any word in the English language that you like saying more than the word Sade? I, it's my favorite Can't tell word. you. Sade. Yeah. I love Sade. I do too. So anyway, I, too. I yeah, I hope she gets nominated. I do year. too. And uh, Crazy Frog. I'm holding out for Crazy Frog. Uh, for who? Crazy Frog. What's Crazy Frog? Um, A musical artist from the early 2000s that was like a CGI frog with goggles on that released a <laughs> hit song called Crazy Frog. <laughs> Do we know Crazy Frog? Please, does anyone in the room know what Crazy Frog is? Oh, my God. <laughs> Please, tell me. This was real? Please, tell me you How know what I this is. How did I miss this? You were busy dating was, women. Was this dating. was in your dark in your dark ages. Yeah, I was a Crazy Frog. Clearly, I know. So, Wait, really, I want to hear— You've never I'll heard of Crazy Kevin Frog? Newsom. No. He's my Crazy Frog. Crazy Frog was like a novelty artist, I want to say, but this was big. He speaks in a language that can't— <laughs> I mean, you know this song. Well, this is... Come on. Do, 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 That's Crazy Frog. This is also from the 80s movie. Uh, no. Yes. It's Crazy Frog. Street Blues? What was this from? Just, it's Crazy Frog. Oh, Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, well, Crazy Frog kind of made it his own. <laughs> Crazy Frog has no genitals. That's the other thing I like about Crazy Frog. Oh, uh, we it's- love a genital-esque frog. Crazy Frog's pronouns are crazy and frog. <laughs> Wow, this is why uh, I think this was when Adderall started, <laughs> and why it started. I don't listen to Adderall. I what just, years was I this? Take this. I listen to this, and I get really pumped er, up. Early two thousands, something like that. So, like around the like, I'm blue, da ba di da. That it was yeah. very much in that vein. A little after, a little Eiffel sixty five ish. Crazy Frogs post nine eleven. Blue da ba di is pre nine eleven. Does that help? Is it? I is think. I'm blue da ba di ba da da. Pre-9-11? Well, we'll have to get the team we'll of researchers on that. I've never heard that. Well, you're welcome. What I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry. No, that was like a nice time capsule there. I know. Um, but I want to get into some... You're kind of dressed like Crazy Frog today. You've got the same shirt that he was wearing, I think. <laughs> I thought he... Was he wearing a shirt? Um, He had like a vest on. This is not a vest. That's what you're wearing, the same thing. Wait, he does have genitals. Oh, <laughs> Wait, sorry. Oh, my God. Can't take that Crazy back. Frog has a dick. <laughs> oh, my God. He's packing heat. Oh, Wait. my God. Arnold Palmer, watch out. Is that his belly button? Uh, let's hope. I I don't know How what is it is, but I want blurred. it inside me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's better. That's wow. Better. This is just on the internet for people to see. How is this not on like Pornhub or something? Can we print out a few thousand copies of this and put these in my trunk? Yeah. <laughs> put them. Uh, I'm gonna I just have went to- into your room and it was just crazy frog <laughs> imagery like all over the walls. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's disturbing. Uh, is it? Oh, or are you just oh. afraid of seeing... Someone who's not in the traditional gender spectrum. Okay, cra- just because Crazy Frog is different doesn't mean that he's disgusting or weird, okay? Open Crazy Frog heart. is also giving, like, Dean Del Rey vibes. Who's that? You know what I mean? No, I don't know. No. Who's that? He's a comedian. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Um, all right, moving along, we have my favorite conspiracy theory right now is everyone thinking Beyonce. Do you know this trend that's happening? Mm-mm. Mm. Let me break it down for you. Huh. So everyone on TikTok, because... Sure. Everyone on TikTok is now saying that Beyonce can make or break somebody's career. Can I read a little bit of it? 
Uh, so here we go. TikTok is flooded with the thank you Beyonce trend. Some thank the music icon after sneezing, scoring high on a test or even after someone lends them money. But really, what's with all the fuss? There's two sides of the coin. The first has a darker ring, which we love a darker ring, as it involves conspiracies linking the singer and her husband Jay-Z to rapper P. Diddy's charges. Saying thank you to Beyonce is said to ward off bad luck. Being in the good graces of the singer is believed to save famous figures' careers from going downhill. For instance, Adele, mm. she profusely thanked Beyonce after her 2012 six Grammy win. She also broke her award during the event, which is believed to have uh, been done to share the Grammy with the American pop icon. Adele became the second woman to win the most Grammys in one night following Beyonce, who achieved this two years earlier. Mm -hmm. Other artists such as Britney Spears, Lizzo, and Kanye West, with his Taylor Swift interruption at the VMAs, have notably acknowledged the singer on stage at award shows too. Those who go against the graces of thanking Beyonce seem to have misfortune follow them. Mm. Uh, people have theorized about the occurrence, which gave birth to the She Knows meme, mm. originating from J. Cole's uh, song of the same title. Mm. So, uh, internet conspiracy theorists claim that Jay-Z and Diddy were behind the deaths of uh, the musicians, Left Eye, Aaliyah, Michael Jackson, in the song. What? This is going into a weird conspiracy theory. Exactly, place. but stay with it. Okay. With uh, Beyonce full aware of the entire ploy, it's worth noting that the song title has a similar ring to Beyonce's last name, Knowles. The song's called She Knows. She and her husband were allegedly seen at Diddy's infamous parties. So on the lighter side, we love a lighter side as well. Uh, conspiracy theorists hopped on the trend by making a meme out of She Knows and Thank You, Beyonce. This escalated to mentioning Beyonce's name during uh, mundane activities with some even theorizing that skipping a Queen Bee song on music streaming apps is taboo. So... She's uh, subject to many conspiracy theories, the most popular alleging that she is a member of the Illuminati and that her alter ego, Sasha Fierce, is a demon. Mm. So it is kind of interesting because people have pulled together these video clips from award shows mm. where the artist goes up there and they're like, thank you, Beyonce, and it cuts mm. to Beyonce and she's like, Mm. Well, there's one step further to this conspiracy that I just want to go bring on up no. because uh, the whole Kanye West thing. The the theory is that he went up there to protect Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift didn't thank Beyonce, and then Kanye rushed up there and was like, like I wanna... "This is for Beyonce. This uh... should have gone to Beyonce. We need to address Beyonce." And it cuts to Beyonce being like, "Oh my." God, Kanye, what are you doing? Yeah. So he actually what? protected Taylor Swift in that moment. He was drunk. <laughs> like, this is giving so much credit to Kanye. Yeah, we don't he need to like, do that. He was, like, absolutely wasted. Yeah. There's pictures of him drinking Hennessy out of the bottle on the red carpet mm -hmm. that night. He was fucking wasted. But also, Taylor Swift had her Eras Tour movie, and, like, Beyonce came to that red carpet. So... It is pretty fascinating because, and I hate conspiracy theorists, and I think there's a big, huge thing with comedians right now where they have to like jump on a conspiracy theory to like get likes and views, and it's kind of like who sad. would do that? I know. <laughs> mm. um, but my favorite conspiracy theory right now about the whole Beyonce saga mm. is America's bright darling of an artist. The she has submitted herself for a Grammy for next year as Artist of the Year and Best New Single, JoJo Siwa. You know who's not? Beyonce. No. JoJo Siwa reacts to her award speech backlash for thanking Beyonce in her award ceremony, telling the haters to go touch grass, which is just weird. I don't want to hear go touch grass with a lesbian pop star. Pause. Mm-hmm. What the fuck ass award did JoJo Siwa win? I am so glad you asked. What because... fake ass motherfucking award did mm -hmm. this girl get? So... In this award show, it was like for a dance, it was like a dance award. She says, I have to say thank you to Beyonce just so that we can keep the dancing community safe. She said on stage at the Industry Dance Awards, mm. Beyonce, you've got great music. We all love to dance it. We all love you. Someone has to, and I'll be that someone. So, first of all, someone call Lorne Michaels because that JoJo impression. 
It's really easy to do. All you have to do is think of like a feral daytime possum drinking a Mountain Dew. Mm. It's easy. With coconut cream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the 2024 Industry Dance Awards, Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to just skip past that and not talk about that and rip on that? Well... Took place in a Costco parking lot. Yes, but can I add something even more... Hosted by Darren's Dance Group. You wish. You wish. I know. know That's too A-list for that. You know what she danced to? No. Jojo Siwa and her backup dancers paid tribute to Liza Minnelli wow. dancing to single ladies in Sex and Sex the City. Sex and the City 2. Du- uh, Abu Dhabi. Sex yeah. and the City 2. Where they go to Abu Dhabi. One of the all-time craziest movies of all time. Wow. Okay, I would love to see that. Um, so so is it good that she thanked Beyonce or bad? I've gotten kind of lost in the conspiracy theory. I'm still thinking about Crazy Frog's penis. Well, if you don't think uh, if you don't thank Beyonce, you're doomed. Okay. Yeah. So like from now on, after I finish this set, I'm gonna be like, thank you, Beyonce. Even if she's not there, which she's not. Right. But well, you never know. You never know. Anybody could pop up here. <laughs> At um, the world famous comedy store. You never know. Maybe if, Blue Ivy. Uh I've seen her in the wild. It's amazing. As have I. It's kind of amazing. I know. That's good luck for like 100. Have you ever been starstruck over like a 12-year-old? Um, No, but one time I did get into an online feud with Sarah Jessica Parker's teenage son. And that's sort of the closest I've come with. Who won? Him. Yeah. He actually wiped do. the floor with me. Yeah. <laughs> wiped the floor. <laughs> he won so hard. <laughs> but, okay, so I guess I should say thank you. Thank, thank you, Beyonce. Beyonce. Am I doing it right? Yeah, we're all doing it right. Okay. Yeah, you have to just manifest and say thank you, Beyonce. And what if I say you're welcome, Crazy Frog? Does that do the same? Thing? Is it a Harvest Moon? <laughs> okay, you've got me there. I don't know. Oh no, no, I the know. penis. It's so weird. The penis is back. It's so weird. All right. Well, this is a, an artist who has thanked Beyonce and has it worked in her favor? I don't know. Oh. Britney Spears reveals that she's married to herself in a wedding dress video. It's the most brilliant thing she's ever done. Does she have the password to her social media? I know. Can't someone take it away? I know. I'm part of the... I'm going to say something really bad. Go for it. Unfree Britney. I think I'm part of the unfree Britney movement. I think last year you were pro free Britney, I, and look how much a year has changed. I'm, I was so wrong. I know. I'm woman enough to admit when I'm wrong, and I was dead wrong. Britney needs to be under a conservatorship. She needs <laughs> someone control. How we backtracked so hard. Uh, full. Full control over mm-hmm. her finances, her well-being, her especially her social media accounts. I know. She'll just disappear for a while, then come back, and then when it's just it's just not it. She, she like posts a picture of a shoe and she does a long caption about like I know. her sister and the wedding and this and that. It's so disturbing. And it just it breaks my heart because it's like Christina Aguilera is having the most snatched moment right now. Quite physically and emotionally. I, I'm, she looks great. She got that good, good facelift. She's got that good... I good. know, I feel the same way. This should be and Britney. I, want, I know, moment. I'm the same way. Britney doing a fun 25th anniversary I EP know. on Spotify. I want to see Britney just show up at a Barry's boot camp and have a shake. Britney should be duetting with Sabrina Carpenter. Absolutely. Not... Posting like this, whatever this is. Looking like a haunted picture on the offerendum. <laughs> she like, looks like a haunted picture on the offerendum. I know. Just like giving you Dia de los Muertos. She's giving she's wearing a tablecloth. Yeah. It's definitely like a like a doily from a uh offerendum for sure. It's- offerenda. Sorry. She offerenda. still can't wipe that mascara from under her eyes. She's had the same look for the past. Two, three years. I'm sick of seeing I this crate, this marble foyer. I know. The, the marble foyer. The crazy marble foyer. There's like eight dogs running behind I her. I know. It's like, a mismatch of style. I know. It's like where the Menendez brothers did the deed. You know, it's it, just not. It's, it's giving just, Dia, de la, Dia de los Muertos Menendez brother. Dia de los Menendez. Dia de los Muertos. Yes. And it's I really. Say it. Over the weekend, she shared a video on Instagram of herself in a wedding dress and told her fans that she had, I married myself. Spears wearing an ivory gown and veil posed for the camera while smiling in the video as Sting's Fields of Gold played. This is terrifying. Oh, Oh. and I hate the way she edits her videos. When you post a video with music, you put the music in 
underneath the whole video. Not playing in the Not background playing of in the, the video. background and chopped up. So it's this like chaotic, nonsensical. You're going from verse one to chorus so yeah, two to yeah. bridge back to verse one. It is so yeah. unbearable to watch. And fields of gold. What in the Delilah hell? Not fields of gold. Oh, Anything but fields, fields of, no. of gold. No. Stop. Don't do it. It's, oh, I can't. Oh my God. The full outfit is so much worse. I know. It's giving corpse bride. She's a haunted doll. Haunted Britney doll. Yep. Like, in all seriousness, mm -hmm. where does she even get these clothes? I'm sure that's like probably one of hers. I don't even know what I'm looking at. It looks like it's from a Talbot's in 1985. Like, what? Where is this even? Oh, what is this? This is Salvation Army. This is Salvation Army. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is really, this is what a woman, this is what a dead person wears for an open casket funeral. This has ruined my fucking day. Oh, yeah. And it will, it will continue because no one will tell her to stop. You know, it's like. Un Free Britney. Say it with me, Justin. Unfree Britney. You won't do it. That's okay. Unfree Britney. No, I honestly, I feel, I agree. Because I want her to have that moment. I want her to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And like, here she comes out. And she's like, what's up, you guys? Remember me? It's fucking Britney, you know? And, she, you know, I don't want her coming out on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stage with knives being like, ah, 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 Honestly, you know, uh, you know how people say like, we, if only we had George Bush back again, you know, like that whole thing. It's like, wow, like we used to think he was the worst, mm -hmm. but if only we had him back, Trump is so bad. That's how I feel about the knives. I'm like, we thought the knives were so crazy when Britney mm -hmm. danced with the knives. I'm like, that's the most coherent thing she's done in years. But now she's also one of those women. What do you mean by that? That marry inanimate objects and stuff. You always see that woman who like married the Eiffel Tower. She's so giving that. She's giving TLC show. In yeah, a bad way. I married, I married my like sex robot, like that kind of stuff. I you know, married myself, like, only to divorce myself two weeks later. Oh no, I you're know. so right. She's giving like, I eat my couch cushion, my strange addiction. What vibes. an icon. I know she was an icon. I honestly that was an insult to yeah. that was an insult to the couch cushion yeah. woman. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. She was great. So Britney married herself. And what's What's the deal with Britney right now? She's still dating that guy who like the gutters guy. I don't know. We don't. But know. apparently, like we had a story like a couple of weeks ago where like three of her kids are uh, allegedly a... like living with her. Wait, Sean yeah. Preston and Jaden? No, no, no. The the her boy, oh, the gardener's no. kids are living with her. No. And Mama Coco, his mom, is like, I want my kids. I want my grandkids back. This is such a mess. I know. I hate it. I hate every minute of it. I, and I'm not trying to sound like we're making fun of her. No, we're I concerned. hate every I hate minute it. of it. I, I want too. her to be happy and yeah. I want her to be doing the career victory lap she should be doing. I agree. It should be her completely off key next to Cher singing <sighs> Believe, not Dua Lipa. I take everything back. You're absolutely right. It should be Britney absolutely ruining that song. Mm -hmm. I wish. I would give anything to see Britney just... Absolutely shit the bed Just so hard botch. on that song. She could actually um, shit her pants on stage and I wouldn't care. No. I would, I would, I would be I like, would love she it. did it. Please, please, may I have another? Not Mountain Dua. Oh. Speaking of shitting yourself. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Did you see this video? This I comes did. from my hometown of San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> Such an I'm honor. I'm very proud. Um, this orca um, took a dump in the SeaWorld fish tank and then lashed out and splashed the entire splash zone with orca poop. First of all, mm -hmm. I did not know that that's what orca poop looked like. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's underwater. <laughs> it really is quite liquid. It's, yeah, look. Second of all, uh, yeah. It was chilly night at SeaWorld. Yeah. Clearly, clearly someone is having a reaction to the krill. But look at these kids like, oh, this bitch better don't. And uh, oh, and uh, there it goes. Oh. Second of all, this is every orca should be doing this at every sea world show. Absolutely. Orcas should not be in the fucking Superdome. I know. There's there's like lights. There's a roof. Orcas should never be in a place with a roof. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? And also, like, I I love a good or orca potty splash. Um, I mean, look at this. It's just. Oh, gross. And these people knew it was coming. And as someone who has been a spectator in the SeaWorld amphitheater, 
That's Shamu, and they name them all weird, like Shamu, Mamu, and this apparently is Can Do Do. Um, Can Do Do. <laughs> I was that little boy at one point mm. because at that at SeaWorld, they would do this thing where if you were a um, good dancer, they would play a song and they'd pick a kid out of the crowd, oh. and you got to like go feed Shamu and like rub his tongue, which was just bizarre to me. Okay, that is one of my dreams, but it was kind of amazing. Yeah, but I'm jealous. They would play Enya, and I remember being a young child jamming out to Enya, flossing with all your heart to sail away, sail away, sail away, <laughs> and I got picked, and I went down there and I got wow. to sit on Shamu, and it shit. All over. You got no, I did. I wish. Okay. I wish. I feel like if you're getting splashed by whale dump, that's a good luck sign. You know I what think I mean? so. That's good luck for like a couple days at least. Mm -hmm. But I, how are SeaWorld still open? I thought they closed all of them. Well, because San Antonio is a coastal city, so it's like right by the ocean. That's also what. And I also San lied. Diego it's in is. Central Texas. I have no Stop. idea why there's a SeaWorld. Stop. Yes. This is so cruel. I hate that they're still doing shows with killer whales. These This killer whale should be in Alaska just like absolutely Living. murdering a thousand seals. Yeah, flipping them, should, flipping flip, them for fun. Yeah, flipping them, hitting them with his tail. Yeah. Just having the time of his life being poached by frackers yeah. or whatever, but let him die naturally, okay? Don't let him make him s dance in this cage to like Gangnam oh. Style or whatever they're making him dance to. My God. Caroline? What's wrong? I just had an epiphany. Go ahead. Shamu is the Britney Spears of the whale community. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. But wait. There's but Shamu hasn't gotten the opportunity to be free. At all. Shamu's still under the conservatorship. Shamu's still in the conservatorship. So, But is it working in his favor? No. So we have to free Shamu. But we don't want Shamu to become too free. Otherwise, he's going to be posting videos wearing a veil saying, I married myself. Oh, no. Shamu I don't want can't that marry himself. Either. Spinning in the ocean with knives. Oh, God. Oh, no. no. Oh, okay, keep Shamu with locked up, actually. marble ocean floors. Yo, oh, God. No, thanks. I'm just. I'm still thinking about the Shamu poop, though. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of when you put... It looks like a dirty soda. Well, it's great when because you, since this video went viral, it's now an ingredient you can add to your Erewhon smoothie. Oh, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. And it's only $25. Mm -hmm. I'll be it's buying really one. It's really good. I'll be buying it's one. It's really good it. with blue kelp. Mm, and, spirulina. Yeah. <laughs> Haley Bieber's Shamu diarrhea smoothie. Can we get one now, please? God damn it! Get me my Shamu diarrhea smoothie! How many times do I have to ask? It has collagen in it and kelp. I know. Um, well, keeping the spirit of Halloween going... Who is this? Huh? Who is this? I want you to guess who this is. Do you I'm, not know who this is? I've never seen this woman in my entire life, and I'm feeling very attacked. Who is this? I'm so glad you said this because I felt the same way. Who is this? She's a country singer. Is it Kelsey Ballerini? No, her name is Dasha. What? I know. Wait. I... Which is what I think. You know how I remember like when um One name? when Dan Savage called Santorum like the frothy diarrhea from like Shh. anal sex? I mean, we just I saw like well Dasha sent. is SeaWorld diarrhea. Poop. Ah, okay. We will only identify Orca diarrhea as Dasha. Dasha from now on. Yeah. This is a country artist who yeah. goes by one name. Dasha. Don't you find it so presumptuous Insulting. when people do the one name? Yeah. You know who did it first? Cher. Mm. Jesus. Cher. <laughs> Jesus, Cher, Beyonce, Madonna. Madonna, Rihanna. Okay, there's probably a few hundred a more. Few. But, but Dasha, not Dasha. Get out of here, girl. Yeah, no. This uh -uh. Take yourself like back it. to San Antonio. She looks like, like Al Alec Baldwin's niece. I was going to say, I, she was giving Nepo baby to yeah, me. Yeah, I hate it. Um, maybe that's why she has one name because she's like, you know, Dasha... Baldwin. She's in a Russian country. No, she's just she's just regular. She's just Dasha. She's regular she has a Russian yeah. name. Okay. Um, okay. So these are some stories of stars who have claimed they've had supernatural encounters, which I'm all here for. Oh. Um, oh and then they show a picture of Liam Payne. Too soon. Um, There's only one celebrity ghost story that matters. Of which course. one? Wasn't it Tara Reid? Who I'm said in. that she was fucked by a ghost? I don't think that was Tara Reid. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I think that might have been... Rosario Dawson? Close? No. Kesha. Kesha. No. 
Kesha. Kesha. I think actually Dasha, Kesha, Kesha Dasha, Crazy Kesha. Frog. There are so many people on this list. I just want okay, to Okay, okay, like sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 I got no, no, distracted. No, 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 no. Uh, in this story, there's a lot of celebrities mm. that are, but I, I don't want to like go through them all. So we'll pick like four. Not Andrew Lloyd Webber. Well. No, girl, you look like a ghost. Okay. Joy Behar did say, which surprised me. She says, I've had sex with a few ghosts and never got pregnant. Behar admitted during an October 22 appearance on The View after her fellow co-hosts discussed supernatural experiences. Whoopi Goldberg quipped, and I love this, mm. I'm just going to let that ride. I don't know how many of you just heard what Joy just said, but I'm going to just let it ride. You know who else let it ride? Joy Behar mm-hmm. on that ghosty. Mm-hmm. Can I say something mean? Yeah. If you're a ghost mm-hmm. and you're coming to... Joy Behar's room? You're coming to Earth mm-hmm. and you can have sex with anyone because you're a ghost. Mm-hmm. And this is no insult to Je- to Joy. Mm-hmm. I love Joy Behar. I think she's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Are you picking Joy out of every human being on Earth to have sex with? I mean, it depends if you're like trapped in the room. You think that the ghost doesn't have a choice? If they're not trapped in, if they're trapped in the room, they don't. That's so. That's like in the case where they're forced for eternity to haunt one specific place, and that is Joy Behar's bedroom. Well, like if they die in the room, very American Horror Story, where right. they can't leave. Like right. they try to leave, they're like, "Oh God, it's Joy Behar." They open the door to leave, oh, and then they okay. wind up right back in the room. On I top thought of that Joy. ghosts could just fly anywhere and have sex with like whoever they want. Because I'd go straight to Cher's house in Malibu. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, and, probably. And, and just have my way with her. This is the song! Mm-hmm. Vanessa Hudgens, she says she's accepted the fact that I've seen things and I hear things uh, during an appearance on the Ke- Kelly Clarkson show back in 2022, noting that she's had a lot of paranormal encounters over the years. I kind of shut it down for a while because the unknown is scary, but I recently was like, no, this is a gift and something that I have the ability to do, so I'm going to lean into it. So she says she had a real first paranormal investigation ahead of the interview where she met a playful ghost while visiting a cemetery. She says she found one tombstone of a spirit that we were told is very playful. So I turn on the spirit box and I said, hi, Sam, I'm Vanessa. This is Gigi. And then Gigi goes, Sam, can you tell us our names? And we just hear Vanessa. And she said, Gigi, I was like, Cool. Do you have anything else you want to tell me? That's the dumbest Great story. story I've ever heard. Great story, babe. Yeah, thanks. That was a good one. That was really, uh, we'll just cut that one out. That <laughs> no, was a mess. It was good. I will say Courtney Cox. Um, I feel like Courtney Cox would have a great uh, celebrity ghost story because she said uh, that this scary experience led to her selling her home, which I'm here for. So... Courtney Cox says, I didn't believe it first, but I lived in this house in Laurel Canyon, and I know exactly the house, which is in LA, obviously, and it was Gypsy Rose Lee's house, not Gypsy Rose Blanchard, we wish, but Gypsy Mm -hmm. Rose Lee's house and Carol King's house. Uh, Cox said during an interview on Jimmy Kimmel Live, so Carol King came over to my house, and she said that there had been a divorce that was really ugly and that there was a ghost in the house. And I was like, yeah, whatever. But other people would stay there with me, like friends of mine. They said that they felt an encounter with a woman who was sitting on the edge of the bed. She also said uh, that Carol King and her had a seance in the house, which I'm like, can we get an invite to? Uh, she still didn't believe in the supernatural, but that changed when a random UPS worker came to her home. This is how porn starts. Yeah. What did the UPS worker do? She's like, I was at the house one day not being a believer. The doorbell rang. It was a UPS guy or something. And I opened the door and he said, do you know this house is haunted? No. And I go, yeah, why? Why do you think that? And he goes, because there is someone standing behind you. And she said, let's sell. Ah! That's a good one. That's really spooky. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had an encounter with a ghost? I'm sorry. Um, yes, I was in, I don't know if I've, I've probably said it on this podcast before, but I was in uh, Louisiana. I was in New Orleans. No, I was in New Orleans. I was in Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. I was covered in whale shit from head to toe. (laughs) Ah, a girl can dream. (laughs) I know. I was in Savannah, Georgia, and I did a ghost tour. And my friend Diana and I at the time went into this kind of murder house. Like, it was notorious Mm. for murder. And the story Mm. was that there was this woman there. She had her two kids, and... Mm. Someone went in with an axe and killed everybody. Mm. And while the case wo- of the Mondays, am yeah, I right? Seriously. Oh, brother. And while the wife was dying, the police showed up and she said her husband's name. Now, they don't know if the husband, if she was like reaching out for her husband, like, James, hurry, mm. you know, or mm. if he actually did it. Mm. So they arrest the husband. 
hang him, kill mm. him, and that was it. Mm. Then the place gets demolished. They build something else. Weird shit happens. They tear it down, build something else. Weird shit happens. So just uh, this like hell mouth of an area. Have they tried opening a sweet green there? They probably those have. Those do very well in urban areas. I, 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 I would definitely take a haunted sweet Nothing green. Nothing haunted about a nice quinoa salad. Is there though? Well, maybe a little yeah. scary, yeah. And so... Then they, it's like a warehouse or something. So they had these like ghost tours. And um, we went in there. They had like e EVPs. Like it picks up signals and all this kind of shit. Oh, those are so fake. That's the stuff that you go when you go to the Scientology store or whatever. Uh -huh. They're like, let me see how stressed you are. And they like put two tin cans in your hands. They're like, oh my God, your readings are off the charts. But it's like a ghost thing where like, where it's like it green and red. It picks up on frequencies. Frequencies, yeah. It's like. Well, ours didn't light up. So, like, we were walking around and we were like, well, this sucks. We just wasted, like, all this money on, like, a bogus ghost tour. And then all of a sudden, these guys were like, hey, you guys were fun. Because we were kind of blacked out on, like, street daiquiris because you can walk around drinking there. <laughs> street it's daiquiris. I'm talking about. They're like... Oh, yeah. Like a, a, like a daiquiri shack. Yeah. Ugh. Like and a you, tall... And it's like malt liquor, cup. but it tastes like banana. Oh, So yummy. Um, and so we're walking around, we're a little drunk, so everyone's like, oh my God, you guys have to come in here for a real ghost encounter. So we go in there, mm. and there's all this equipment set up, and there's like people in there, and we're in like the back. We had like the VIP, like, they took us away from the tour. Mm. They're like, come back here. So there's a chair sitting there, and all these like ghost hunters, and they're like, we come here every day, we pick up different stuff, we, we have now... We're crazy people with yeah. like magnets and fake equipment. And no relationships, right. Yeah. And so... Um, they're like, we have a resident ghost here. We're actually in the sleeve quarters right now. And I'm like, well, can this get any better? Geez, downer. Seriously. And it's this tiny room and there's a chair. This is like where our resident ghost, Steve. And I'm like, Steve, that's the resident ghost named Steve. Mm. So my friend Diana sits there and they're like, in the chair, they're like, oh, see, see if you can sit in the chair and see if anything comes up. So she's sitting there and we're just drunk. She's like, Steve, are you there? And all of a sudden, the needle goes green. Mm. And we're like, okay. And she's like, I go, Steve, does it bother you that my friend is in your chair? Green. Yes. And then um, I said, Steve, do you like my friend? Green. Yes. Is Dua Lipa a vocalist? I wish. Red. I wish. And then finally I said, is my friend your type? Red, no. Oh, okay. And then without a beat, my friend goes, Steve, are you gay? Green. The ghost hunters lost their minds. Wow. This ghost came out of the casket oh that God. night, and I think we set him free. They all lost it. They're like, we never just, we never thought to ask Steve if he was gay. I'm like, well, you got a ghost named Steve hanging out in the slave quarters. He's like, big old D. Steve you wants know? to get his gooch juice. I know. You know? It was kind of crazy. And then we get back on the haunted tour bus. Yeah. And the Hot Topic girl tour guide was like, did anybody see anything on the haunted tour? And our, we're in the back. We're like, Steve's gay. And she's <laughs> like, we did hear that there was a revelation. And it was wow. like the best moment. So you sort of communed. You walkie-talkied with a gay ghost. Mm -hmm. Very spooky. Yeah, very spooky. Wow. We we set a ghost free that day. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. You know, get out of there. That's right. Get on out of the out of the ghost closet. Yeah. Ghost Steve. Also, he's from like the 17 or 1800s. And his name was Steve? I know, or Steven. Okay. You know, probably that, Steven. Sure, sure, sure. But that's what I'm saying. I'm like, ghosts are always like I'm a bit old. A, I'm a bit of a skeptic. It's always like a girl with a bonnet oh. named Emily who died of like scarlet fever. Yeah, it's a girl who does improv classes in whatever third rate city you're doing the ghost yeah. tour in. Yeah. And they put like dark eye makeup on. They look at Britney Spears in an Instagram video. I know. But <laughs> there's nothing think, spooky about this. Are we ever gonna get like a like a like a like a Ghost from modern times? Are we getting ever gonna like, is RuPaul gonna haunt someone? You're just gonna hear, <sighs> she already done had hers. Yeah, is, you know. I want like Bill Paxton to come fuck me. Oh. Isn't he a ghost? <laughs> like, where's Bill Paxton in my bed? You know? Deep cut. He's Deep dead. Cut, yeah. He could ghost me. Which one was he in Twisters? Yeah. Oh, uh, he was hot in Twisters. He could, he could crash into me, Dave Matthews style, anytime. <gasps> you Get need his ghost to have penis a all up in seance? Me. Yes. With candles. Yeah. With Dave Matthews Band playing. Yeah. And like Bill Paxton pictures. And I think you might be I'm able to be conjure. In a ghost three way with Jimmy Carter, you know, soon. He's, <laughs> I mean, he. Not soon. But he. I know. He's, we saw it. Yeah. I know. It was scary. Yeah. He's going to die soon. But I want to be in a ghost three way with him, 
Bill Paxton, and who else do I want? Get Amy Winehouse in there. Oh, wow. Mix it up. Why not? So Jimmy Carter soon, Amy Winehouse, and Bill Paxton. Sure. And Leslie Carter. Oh. I want it to be a party. Like a swap party. Get the fentanyl out. Oh, wow. Let's have a crazy ghost time. It's Halloween. Yeah. Have a, like a, a fentanyl air one smoothie with I'll some orca it. poop. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Live it, queen. Mm-hmm. Well, you know who else is haunted? Al Pacino, because he says he'll forever be haunted by his childhood injury to his penis. Wait, what happened to his penis? Here's the thing. <laughs> what didn't happen to his penis? What did it? Yeah. Oh, Apparently, he's not only a scar face, but a scar penis. Um, He released a memoir called Sunny Boy, and he had an accident when he was living in New York, South Bronx as a 10-year-old. He says, I was walking on a thin iron fence... Why? Doing my tightrope dance. Why any of those Because it was like things? 1904. Didn't they do that? And- Weren't they playing with sticks and balls? Yeah. Like a stick and a hoop? Yeah, that was it. He was doing his tightrope dance. He said that like it was a normal thing. He said, oh, it had been no. raining all morning, and sure enough, I slipped and fell, and the iron bar hit me directly between my legs. Oh, no. He says he was about 10 years old when it happened. Oh, and no. it's to this oh, day, no. he remembers being hunched over and moaning in such pain that he could not make it home. Luckily, an older gentleman scooped him up and took him to his aunt's house where a house doctor was subsequently called. He said, "I, with my pants were completely down on my ankles as the three women in my life, my mother, my aunt, my grandmother, the Holy Trinity, poked and prodded at my penis. I thought, God, please take me now as I heard them whispering things to one another as they conducted their inspection. What happened? And I, the thing is, when you're talking about a traumatic penis injury, I need you to be very specific. Otherwise, my mind is going to go crazy guessing. Was there a severance? I don't think there was a severance. An I impale? Think he, his, his penis did remain... Attached? His penis did remain attached along with the trauma. So he just racked himself really hard. He just got on an iron a little bit. Cord. Yeah. Here's Ugh. what I have to say to that. What? hoo <laughs> I think that's the sound he made when he, like, hit the wire. He's like, hoo yeah. yeah. That's oh probably where it came from. You know, I saw Al Pacino once in real life, kind of recently at the Sunset Tower, not to brag. Wow. Yeah, I've been there. I love that place. It's open to the public. <laughs> they let mm. anyone in. Mm-hmm. And he did something that I'll never forget for as long as I live. He was wearing the squeakiest sneakers oh, yeah. I have ever seen anyone wear. And you know how old people wear like weird New Balances that you don't even see in the stores? Yes. He had like one of those. <laughs> like you know? nurse shoes? Yeah. Yeah, getting ready They're for like hospice. All one color. You're like, yeah. where do you even buy those? Like old people buy their clothes at a whole different store. Well, and they he was, wear those so they can hear each other when they're coming it close. It was so squeaky, Justin. It was literally like... <laughs> Like so loud, I could hear him. You could, it was echoing through the whole restaurant, and like you'd hear it. You heard him before you saw him. You could hear him from like 50 feet away. He was squeaking back and forth. It was so squeaky. Which is crazy because when the time comes when someone's sleeping at the Sunset Tower and they hear a squeaky sneaker, that'll be like, oh, that's Al Pacino. That means Al Pacino with his semi detached penis is going to come ripe you. Yeah. His ghost. <laughs> Well, going from one penis story to another. Oh, good. Cooper Koch, which, um, did you watch the uh, Menendez Brothers Monsters limited series? I haven't, but I've heard that this is a very hot gay one. That's all I've heard about. He is kind of yummy. Not going to lie. I've Uh, heard. He went on Watch What Happens Live the other day, and there is a scene in the shower where he is completely nude, and he's packing, you know. Are we... I need specific. Okay. Do we see back ball? Side meat? We see side meat. Okay. Sort of, yeah. We see front ball shaft. Do we see front stump or front shaft? Full shaft? You see front full shaft. Wow. FFS. Wow. Yeah. Wow, for fuck's sake, full front shaft. For fuck's sake, full front shaft. Okay, so you see full front shaft. Do you see front head? Front head. Front head. Side head. Side head, side meat, no back ball. Back ball lifts his butt. Back ball lifts his butt? Lifts his leg because he's in jail. He like, does like get a perky. Down. Yeah. <laughs> he, does like, he does a full round off. Full round <laughs> off, see, side saddle. You see triple sow cow. ball. Yes, he's yes. in the herky. Yes, yeah. Okay. Triple axle, triple lutz. Side saddle. Toe pick. Okay, so he really goes for it. Yeah. 
Um, so he was on Watch What Happens Live, and of course, Andy's just like, so uh, Andy Cohen Andy mentions- Andy can't help himself, such a perk. But good for him. Yeah. You know what? Get the nitty gritty questions so we all want to know. Walter Cronkite of penis. Yes, he really is. Um, so he revealed that he didn't use a prosthetic for the prison shower scene in the, in the show. In honor of the star showing his full frontal nudity in the Netflix crime drama, Andy Cohen counted down the top five most iconic full frontal moments over the years. Such a now, now, uh, as Cohen mentioned, Mark Wahlberg's Boogie Nights and the actor using a prosthetic dick, and Koch chimed in also just to say mine was not a prosthetic. And he goes, well, that was going to be my next question. And he says, congratulations to you, Cooper. You're very blessed, aren't you? And he said, I'm very well hung. Do you think this is true? What? That he really didn't use a prosthetic? I don't think he did. He's been naked in other films. Oh, someone was quick with that answer. What? Keeping up with his filmography, I I'm doing see. my research. It's for the show, I promise. It's for the podcast. God, you're a well-researched journalist. Because <laughs> um, well, this is the thing, right, that everyone's been saying they've been using prosthetics. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that guy from White Lotus? Theo James oh, said that his was a prosthetic. So hot. He's, I'd want that prosthetic all mm -hmm. up in me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, okay, good for him. Wait, was he hard in the scene? No. Semi? Uh, he could have been fluffed a little bit, but like slight fluffage. Yeah, but I mean, like he. This is all him. It's all him. Good for him. Method. Method. And how are we do? Are we going to show a picture? We don't have that queued up. I just have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we don't want to like me to you on the show. I mean, like, if I'm Look. asking for it, it's not. I'm actually I mean, me to you and you guys it. in this situation. Yeah, you're like we have you an have HR to, department you don't have here. To, but like, if you were to give me an inchage, what would the inchage be on that? I'm okay with centimeters. I would meters. say like a Dave Matthew seven. A Dave, a proper DMB yeah. seven. Okay. Yeah. I know Julia Roberts somewhere was like, oh, aware? You know what? I'm going to even go further. I'm going to give it a um, seven and a half, eight. Wow. And girth? Quite girthy? Not No. no. It's a little skinny. A little skinny. But mm -hmm. sometimes you don't need it to be girthy. No. Sometimes skinny is nice, lean, like a runner's body, but a penis. Yeah. Yeah. And he's very fit. You know, he's very handsome. Um, I'm sorry to make us pull up the penis, no, but we're, I can't we're going. It. We want an honest reaction because you've never seen it. How can I sit here on your, on the world famous podcast mm -hmm. that you host and do my best job if I don't see the penis? I know. Then we're not doing justice. So I have a Mr. Skin login if that's helpful. <laughs> Here, I can pull it up on my phone. Is it like saying like I'll oh, work this on is that a business too. account? Okay, let's put a pause as I look on Twitter as well. Got it. Oh, you got it? That oh, was yeah. really quick. It's actually my wallpaper. <laughs> um, so this is like side. Okay, let me let me have an honest okay. full on. Well, do you want front or side? I would like to start with side and then work up to front. Okay. Okay, let me really get it. Oh my God! Oh my God! First of all, this is 100% a little chubbed. I think it's a little chubs, yeah. There's lift on that. I know. There's It's Defying Gravity, Wicked Style. Oh, uh, November 22nd. I'm counting down the days, babe. Okay, this is very interesting. And he's got... Oh, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. What? Oh, you're not going to like this. Why? Will you pull up a crazy frog's penis really quickly? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No. But there is I, one thing I want to point out that is similar. Okay. The curve? It's not just the curve. Oh, uh, no. The first picture, please. <laughs> Actually, sorry. Um, X this out. The very last... Yeah. The... Mm, they've got similar heads. Is what, what I wanted to say. I knew it looked familiar. Yeah, they've there is there is a sort of similarity here aesthetically that I would be remiss not to point out. Crazy frog and crazy cotch. Crazy frog and crazy cotch. Uh. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's it's thin. It's nice. But it's yeah. Oh my god. This is. I'm. They're like mirror images. How is this like <laughs> available for children? Well, I don't know. Anyway. Um, but we also have, let's see, we have the... That's a beautiful, yeah, very nice, very nice, Peeny. <laughs> very nice wiener. Now this one, and then, yeah, that's him. Not in, but in a different show. You buried the lead. You told me to show you from the side first. No, 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 show that back to me. Man's got juicy balls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, low hangers, love that. Good for him. 
Show it off. Show off your low hangers. I yeah. love it. I like that. I love penises. One of my favorite things to look at in the whole world. Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for him for not using a prosthetic and keeping it all natural. But speaking of someone who didn't keep it all oh, natural, no. Tyra Banks was a diva nightmare during her controversial Victoria's Secret catwalk show where she resurrected her trademark smize move. Now, I forgot and <sighs> lost complete, like I had no idea, lost track of time that Victoria's Secret fashion show hasn't been on the air in like, Seven years? And did we miss it as a society? No. I didn't give a shit. Like, it came on, like, some random hour here. It was, like, 5.30. And I'm like, what is this? Victoria's Secret is in such a desperate clawback for relevancy. They have lost so much market share because of scams. Seriously. And Fenty. They're struggling to keep their market share. They have no relevancy with Gen Z or Gen A or whatever Gen comes after Gen yeah. Z. Yeah, Gen Alpha. They're, Gen Alpha, thank you. Mm -hmm. They are are such a loser brand and they have an Epstein, they have like a whole like Epstein yeah, connection vibe. to, no, yeah. like full connection because oh, really? like Les Wexler who was one of Epstein's big advisors is like behind Victoria's Secret. Like, Was that the brand, creator of Gap and stuff like I that? Because so. Victoria's Secret's with them. Their brand is so damaged. I want this brand to die. Uh, I want them to go away yeah. and die. I hate the fashion show. It's just so it's dumb. It's so toxic. It's so fucking dumb. Yeah. Sorry, babe. Skims did it better. Your time is done. And the panties make my pussy itch. They're so low quality. Like, you don't want that stuff anywhere near your special area. <clears throat> I... We're done with you. Bye. I, Next. I honestly don't understand who this is for because I feel like the last time it was on, people like boycotted it for some reason. Women don't want to see that. Well, it's just, it's just, it's, it, you know what it looks like? You the store on La Cienega, Trashy Lingerie. Mm. It's literally that window display all year. Except that at least has a sense of whimsy and humor. Yeah, because it's like costumey. And this is what that is. Like the wings are stupid. Like they were, they were not even, they were in like a, like a, uh, uh, like a not a storage unit. They were in like a sound stage with like beams and construction and shit in the background. Like it just didn't have the same oomph and it never will. It's not sexy. We've progressed past that as a society. This isn't sexy anymore. It's giving human trafficking. Well, and people I agree. It's giving like it's weird just like, why vibes. are we doing this? And it's like, oh yeah, my fantasy. Shh. I'm a grown well, baby. Is, I'm a grown baby. What? My fantasy is inflation going down. Thank you. My fantasy is being able to buy a house as a millennial. That'd be great. This is no longer my fantasy. No, it's just like it's it's like 2000, early 2000s, like Juicy Couture. Give me like a nice highlighter in the corner of my eye. Mm. Like the wings were stupid. Like Bella Hadid was there. Gigi Hadid was there, and then Tyra Banks shows up, and of course, drama. Shocker. Always. Tyra Banks has to just bulldoze everybody because she had a, what is it, like a 17-year hiatus from the show. And they're like, you know what? This is broken. Let's make it even worse by bringing Tyra Banks. Sorry, 19-year hiatus. And people are saying she was a absolute nightmare before the show. She showed up. Um, and let me tell you about some of her diva behavior. She's uh, so crazy. Did you ever have her smize cream in Santa Monica? She tried to start an ice cream concept called Smize Cream, and I went and tried it, and it was the worst ice cream I've ever had. I'm sure. I I mean, I, I, I forgot how much I loved, hate the Tyra Banks show, where oh. she was, like, homeless for six hours, and, you know, she was like, I can relate. That actually um, was amazing. But she, apparently, she said this. She okay. says, the only model that demanded her own private dressing room, everyone else shared it, and said if they wanted her, they couldn't also have Naomi Campbell. So she blacklisted Naomi Campbell from being in the show, but also remember on the Tyra Banks show, she didn't have an audience when Naomi Campbell came out because she wanted it to be intimate. So she's like, please welcome Naomi Campbell. And Naomi Campbell came out to an empty audience wow. on the stage. Bitch. So um, fucking shady. She said during Tyra's walk, Banks allegedly refused to be shown from behind and demanded that her bottom be covered at all times. They also reportedly had to design a special bustle for her to wear on stage. Bustle. She ended up wearing a busty black bra underneath a rhinestone corset, which was paired with black pants and a metallic cape. 
Tyra's smize ignited nostalgia for many supporters, but others thought her walk was sloppy and bad. One person commented on the clip of Banks on the catwalk saying she was overdoing it. Another wrote, did Tyra always walk like this? I just noticed it's pretty bad. Like, sloppy bad. I mean, let's. can you see her walk? Let's see. I mean, she... Wait, I that's mean, what she wore? I mean, it looks like just Shaka Khan, like... Comic Con Halloween costume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's she's not a, a good beautiful walk. woman, of course, she's, and she's a legend. Yeah, but she looks like Deadpool. Like this is a full head to toe. She looks like every- Deadpool. It's like covering everything. It's like a yeah. superhero look. You well, know? yeah, she didn't want her back and her butt. She's wearing this metallic cape. I think it looks really lame. It just looks so cheesy. Oh, and rose petals are coming down from the ceiling. Get this out is of the here. Victoria's Secret fashion yeah. show. It looks like a bat mitzvah. Mm. It looks so low rent. This looks like like the. Victoria's Secret experience, but like Willy Wonka and Bridgerton. Totally. Like, like, like it looks like you paid a lot of money. This looks like Dancing with the Sharks. <laughs> Whale Sharks. Ro- mm, Dasha. Paging Dasha. Uh, page, it's giving this Dasha. This has Dasha written all over yeah, it. Yeah, I don't like it. Rose petals? Seriously? Yeah, it's like lame. Like it's weird, like tacky whore Valentine's. It's tacky whore Valentine's Day. Yeah. I, it makes me so bummed out. This story has depressed me. This has been the most depressing news story of the week. And You're welcome. It was... Tyra Banks' catwalk. And there were more depressing things that happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have time for a couple more stories. Oh. Let's see. Uh, this woman. Uh, a, 60-year-old, a 66-year-old woman once tried to sue all gay people. Um, this story came from 2015 and it's resurfaced mm. because, and I'm just kind of amazed. I just, first of all, I love the headline. 66-year-old Nebraska woman tries to sue all gay people. It's so, just the phrase 66-year-old Nebraska woman is shady. I don't know why. It's literally describing who she is, mm-hmm. but the shade of Nebraska. in that and the 66 of it mm-hmm. all, it's like, you didn't need to mention her no. her age, did you? Well, but I'm happy you did. But yeah, I'm glad you did because it just says Drag so her. Drag this Drag her, mama. Yeah, drag her like Tyra Banks at that runway. Tyra Banks dragging her big bottom covering cape. (laughs) Big bottom covered cape. Big bottom bustier bustle, sorry. So this woman says that she was suing every single gay person on the planet, every single one, and can we really blame her? A screen capture of a New York Magazine article, Driscoll versus Homosexuals, has resurfaced online five years later, and a new meme emerged. Twitter users, sorry guys, it's X now, Lawyered up, mm. sharing who they defend. They be some if they be summoned to court. Uh. And yes, before you asked, Legally Blonde's Elle Woods was first picked, and then in came everyone from Ally McBeal to the blue-haired lawyer from The Simpsons. But also, um, wow, I know who I would ha- defend me if I were sued by a sixty-six-year-old gay woman in Nebraska. Not Regular, gay woman. Sorry, straight woman. Yeah. But this was an actual case. This plaintiff, Driscoll Ambassador for Plaintiffs God and His Son, Jesus Christ, wrote a seven-page handwritten complaint against the defendants, homosexuals, their given name, homosexuals, their alias, gay, all that kind of stuff. It's unclear what the laws, if any, she thought to evoke in doing this, but she acted as her, her own lawyer and demanded that the district court in Omaha decide once and for all whether being gay is a sin. She says that homosexuality is a sin and that they, the homosexuals, know it is a sin to live a life of homosexuality. Why else would they have been hiding in the closet? (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, I mean, look, this is a clearly mentally ill woman. What do you mean? She's from Nebraska. Well, if you choose to live in Nebraska, you're mentally ill. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's not a nice place. She says, I'm 66 years old, and I never thought that I would see the day in which our great nation or our great state of Nebraska would would become so compliant to the complicity of some people's lewd behavior. Um, Mama. She based her arguments on the Bible and the um, Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Why are judges passing laws so sinners can break religious and moral laws? Will all the judges of this nation... Uh, judge God to be a liar. The civil rights case was assigned to Judge John Gerard, who you'll be shocked to know ended up throwing out the complaint. Ally, 
Ally. Ally. Yes, Mama boots the house down, Judge John Gerard. <laughs> Slay, Mama. It's giving uh, it's, Ally, Mama. It's giving corn husk realness. Ooh. Bitch. Slay, bitch. So that's cool. But you know, if Trump wins, she will win the case. No. We and you will her. be in jail. No. As will I. Because I'll be right there beside you fighting. Brick by brick, brick Shawshank by brick. Redemption. I'm going to throw the first dirty soda uh. at whatever the next version of, what's the thing yeah. where they threw the first brick? Stonewall. Stonewall. I'm going to throw you the just, first. Hold on. I forgot. You I forgot. You just were like, ally, yes, mama. What's the thing that started <laughs> gay pride? Shit, what was yeah. that again? No one died at Stonewall. No one died at Stonewall. Yes, it was Stonewall. Yeah. Okay, that was not a boots the house down mama no, 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 on my no. part. But that was not a But you owned up to it and we got to it. Mm-hmm. And we got I'm it. going to dig a tunnel under said prison like Shawshank mm. and climb out through orca poop and just scream oh, no. under a rainstorm. But like you, Tim you Robbins. Dig through and you finally get your first breath and you're somehow in Britney Spears' oh. ugly foyer. Could you you're like, imagine? No, no, back to prison, back to prison. Prison, you Could go back, you, you go back. Imagine worst ever. <laughs> and that's the first thing you see. You're crawling through her toilet, and she's there with her like corpse bride outfit on, looking at you, and you're like, Go! Fields God! of gold is playing. Uh, oh, fields she's of in a gold. veil looking in the mirror. You're like, fuck, let me get back to maximum security gay prison. If that's not a haunted maze one day. They're really missing out. Halloween Horror Nights, take notes. Take notes. Britney Spears' bathroom. That would be too scary, though. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what else is scary? Which uh, will become a spirit Halloween soon. Kmart's very last large-scale store is located in a ritzy beach town, and it's closing, R.I.P. The last Kmart Kmart. is closing? Yeah. This is awful. It's the new Blockbuster. Oh, my God. Yeah. I thought they all closed, like, 20 years ago. Well. The fact that there was still one, it makes me really sad. Do you want to hear something crazy? Do You were there. I'm sure you were there. Do you remember the Kmart on like Beverly? The Kmart on Beverly. By the Beverly Center? Sort of. I'm not not Beverly Center. The Grove. It was across the street from the Grove. Yes, yes. Do you remember when they shut it down? And turned into a Britney Spears Museum. Oh my God, your mind right now? Oh my God, that was next level. The gay ghost is in you. Steve the Gay Ghost? Wow. Isn't that crazy? It was the Britney wow. Spears in the zone experience. Well, yes. Isn't that wild? So Kmart has officially closed its last store. The final Kmart store has stood in Bridgehampton, New York, but it's currently set to close. Oh, it's already closed. Oh, um, once the Long Island God. location shuts the stores for good, shoppers won't be able to find the once popular discount stores within the continental U.S. There's other small convenience store versions of the brand scattered around the country. God forbid. The closure someone- of the brick and mortar store will mark the end of an era for the brand. An employee of the location confirmed on CNN following the closure of the lone New York location, a small Kmart store in Miami, Florida, will be the final location bearing the Kmart brand on the mainland with a small number of other locations between Guam. You know where Guam I don't want to go? And the U.S. Virgin Islands. I don't want to go to the Kmart in Guam. That's I don't my know. nightmare. I feel like at least they have something, you know? Like a Martha Stewart towel. Yeah. I'm throwing the first brick at the Kmart in Guam. As you should. Mm, that's my stone wall. <laughs> like, I stand for gay people. They're like, in Caroline, Guam. You're in They're Guam like, at a we Kmart. hate them here. It's like, <laughs> God damn it. Fuck. Is that woman from Nebraska on vacation here? <laughs> yes, yes, she, she is. Yes, she is. But isn't that crazy? End of an era. I never was a Kmart person. Me neither. My parents, but I remember being a kid, that was like a joke. Kmart was bad. Oh, you get your clothes at Kmart? Yeah. Like, that was kind of a thing. If you're ranking big box stores, like, what is the official ranking? Like, is Walmart is the least fancy? Uh, I'm so glad we're having this discussion. Well, and what In he, my head, mm, I go... Lord and Taylor. <laughs> I go Target 1. Target 1, yeah. Target 1. Walmart 2. Walmart 2? Kmart 3. Kmart 3. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. What do you do? I don't know what other ones there are, though. Is the thing Lord and Taylor? No. Sears. Sears 4. Sears is like. Sears 10. Sears is low. Sears is low. Sears is really low. But like, but like I'm saying, like a Target, Walmart, Kmart. Mm. What other stores are there? 
I like Marshalls? Marshalls doesn't really count to no, me. No, because I, I mean, what about BJ's? Who? What did you call Excuse me? Excuse me, sir. I just met you. B- BJ's? Yeah. <laughs> What's like, a BJ's? Take me to dinner first. There's, it, am I saying Cooper it? Coach. BJ's? What? It, it's like a, the Crazy discount fun. store. It's like a... Um, BJ's restaurant. BJ's discounts or something. Am I crazy? Yes. BJ's, BJ's is a BJ's restaurant. Warehouse. Oh, BJ's, BJ's Warehouse. Do they have clothing here? Yeah. They oh. do. It's Kirkland brand. Oh. Oh. That's like the that's like the biggest brand one. Wait, Kirkland from Costco? Is oh, that BJ? Costco, Costco. I'm New England. Mm. I I'm I'm BJ's, not Costco. <laughs> we get it. Yeah. I'm like Costco. Don't mess with me when I come to Costco. I've never heard of a BJ's. I'm like, why why have I been trapped in Britney's bathroom all these years? I'm, I'm from <laughs> New England. I love Sorry. Costco, but Costco, Costco doesn't really Costco. count. Costco doesn't count. That's a that's a warehouse. It's yeah, a little different. Costco's like full like bulk. Bulk. Yeah, I feel like I feel. Target, Walmart. You nailed it. I There's like no it. need to even. Target's a little classier. So classy. Very like monochromatic. Oh God. Yeah. I mean that dog. Yeah, and I feel like there's less fights in a Target. Oh my God. Yeah. No one's. It's not. It's not getting ugly in a Target. Yeah. Yeah. People are very respectful. Um, in the Kmart, I'm taking out a bitch's eyes for a towel. Well, <laughs> <laughs> get out of my way. I need Mar- my Turkish towel. I need my Turkish Martha Stewart fine living towel. I'm I'm absolutely roundhouse kicking a woman in the vag. Good for you. Or my towel. Good that, for that's you. That's Kmart. That's like the, that's encouraged there. And when she hits the ground, you need to look her in the eyes and be like, thank you, Beyonce. Oh, that's I'm like, it. welcome to Guam, bitch. Welcome to Guam, like you dumb bitch. Well, Caroline, did you have fun? I had the best time, This Justin. was so much fun. Please come back anytime. Oh, my You're God. You're welcome. We had discussion. We had debate. We had spirited exchanges. Yeah, we did. It was good. And that's what this podcast is all about. We came together. We came apart. We came back together. Exactly. Yeah. And the listeners love you. I love you. Please tell everybody where they can find you, what you have coming up. Um, And then I want to hear about the show you're working on later. Well, you can catch me at the Kmart in Guam. Oh. Um, And you can catch me cleaning the tank in the San Antonio, in the SeaWorld San Antonio, Mm -hmm. cleaning the whale shit. Mm -hmm. You can catch me on Dasha's World Tour. Oh. I'll be opening for Dasha. You're opening for Dasha? I'm opening for Dasha. That's wild. And you can catch me getting getting fucked by the gay ghost Steve in New Orleans, but we're not 100% sure where that story took place. He could be um, uh, bi. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Steve. I threw the first is, brick at Stonewall. <laughs> and I did at the Guam, the Cape Martin Guam, you know it. So it was so fun to be here. And yes. I could care less. If people want to find me, they can. And if not, I don't care. They will definitely find you. So don't you worry. And uh, thank you guys for sticking around. We love you. Thank you for liking, reviewing, subscribing. And as always, we'll catch you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. 